I wanted to pause here and incorporate a very interesting uh, explanation of the beginning of Surat Isra. And this is something that is relatively uh, modern, as I will explain. If you have a Quran, by the way, it would be nice if you uh, check your Quran right now, the first pages of Surah Isra. Uh, if you have some type of Quran app or something, please take a look at that so that you can follow along. Because this is now another interpretation of a very classical set of verses that some many ulama of our times actually, more and more ulama, are uh, interpreting Surat Isra as being one of the signs of Judgment Day. And if you begin from the surah, it starts off with the issue of Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi, the issue of Isra, and the fact that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blessed the uh, Bani Israel and that He gave them uh, some some power in the land. Now the verses then go on. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ This is verse number 4 of Surah Isra. Okay, follow along. These are very powerful verses. We, قَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ We conveyed and decreed to the children of Israel in the kitab. What is the kitab here? Most of our ulama said the Lawh al-Mahfuz. We decreed amongst the Lawh al-Mahfuz. That to whom? To the Bani Israel. لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You shall cause fasad in this world twice. You shall cause fasad twice. لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا And you shall reach a degree of great haughtiness. عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا Interestingly enough, Allah uses the same adjective for Fir'aun. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ so Allah is saying the Bani Israel will have two periods of might and izza that they will honor or abuse. Which one? Abuse. Okay, you guys all follow me? Everybody on the same page? Okay, now we move on. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا when the first of these two promises come, when the first time that you shall rise up, you shall be dominant, you shall have ulu and cause fasad. What is fasad? Fasad is corruption. Fasad is killing. Fasad is subjugation of people. Fasad is lots of chaos. Wherever you are, this is fasad. Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad. This is fasad. Fasad is caused by corrupt people, by evil people. So Allah is saying, when the first of these two times is going to happen, what is going to happen? We shall send against you. An army will come, a group will come against you. They are our creation, our servants. Ibadallana. We created them. You didn't create them. Ibadallana. Uli ba'sin shadid. They have great military might. They are strong qawm. They're not a weak qawm. Uli ba'sin shadidin. Fajasu khilal ad diyar. And they managed to go and probe even into your houses. They're going to go and all the way, destroy all the way to your houses. وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا And this was a promise that indeed took place. It is a true promise. وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا Everybody clear so far? Okay, now. ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ Then we gave you back a karra, a new chance. We gave you another chance. And we caused you to have a victory over your enemies. So from being subjugated, from being humiliated, what happened? You rose up again. You rose from the ashes and you developed power. And we gave you blessings. You now had a civilization, children, wealth. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا And we made you powerful in numbers. Your أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا means your manpower or your strength or your military might. All of this is allowed here, right? So you became a mighty nation. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمْ كَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينًا وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ يَا بَنِي إسرائيل. 
if you do good, it's only for yourself, you will do good. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا But if you do evil, it will be used against you. You have power. If you are faithful to your commandments, if you obey Allah, you will benefit yourself, your nation will thrive, you will become more powerful. But if you misuse that power, and if you subjugate others and cause tyranny and fasad, then that will be taken away from you. When the akhira wa'd, the akhira doesn't mean, does not mean the akhira akhira. The akhira he means the end of the two, the, the second one, the last one. The ulahuma is the first one, the akhira is the last one. Doesn't mean the akhira the hereafter. No, that's a misunderstanding that people might have when they don't understand the meaning of akhira here. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ When the final of these, meaning the second, because there's going to be two times that they will rise up, right? When the second and final time, because there shall not be a third time of power. Ya Bani Israel, Allah has decreed, you shall come to power and be a civilization twice. The first one, وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا It is a done deal. The second one, when it shall happen, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ There is a missing phrase here, and that missing phrase, we should say it is understood by the contest that Allah will send another group of people, and they will cause your faces to become sour. You will find that because when you're hurt, when you're irritated, when you're angry, when something happens to you, your faces scowl. After they were beaming with pride, they will now become scowling with anger. Now here, listen to this. And they shall enter the masjid. Which masjid? Ya audience. Aqsa. There's no ikhtilaf. The masjid here is not Makkah and Medina. Aqsa. وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدِ And they shall enter the masjid. Masjid al-Aqsa. كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ As they entered it the previous time. كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا And they will destroy whatever you had taken over with your ulu, whatever you had done, Whatever you had built, whatever had been constructed with your ulu, وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا All of it will be destroyed and taken away. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَنْ يَرْحَمَكُمْ Your Lord might have mercy on you. وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا And if you go back to your evil ways, we will go back to our punishing of you. That's what it means here. If you go back to your evil ways, we will go back to punishing you. وَجَعَلْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ حَصِيرًا And we have made Jahannam a place for the kuffar to reside in. Jayyid. Okay. Everybody followed the translation? Clear? Jayyid. Okay. You all understood the translation. Okay. What is the tafsir of this page of Surat Isra? So here is one example that honestly so many of our modern scholars are rethinking through because the Quran is so explicit. So you, you see where I'm heading with all of this. You all understand. Where I'm heading, there are dozens of modern ulama that have already said, I'm not the one saying it. But not a single alim 70 years ago held this view. How could they when the political world was very different 70 years ago? You guys know what happened 70 years ago. Not a single alim ever felt that this ayah is a prediction of the future. Every alim that I have read, I could have missed some, but 40 ulama that I've read, the classical mufassirin, everyone is considering these two been there, done that from the past. And why would they not? Because in their time frame, the Bani Israel, there is no hope of another nation coming. They are scattered throughout the world. There is nothing that combines them. So they read these verses, they read history and common sense. There's nothing to make fun of, nothing to dismissive attitude. I would have done the same had I been alive a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. That's human beings. Don't make our ulama infallible. I can be wrong and they can be wrong. They can be wrong, I can be right, I can be right, they can be wrong. This is the nature of human beings. These ulama, pretty much all of them, they said what? These two ulu have already taken place in the past. Done deal. 
and then they differed as is to be expected because there is no ijma they differed which of these two and some said that the first of these was the Assyrian exile of 722 BC when the uh, Assyrians attacked the remnants of the original uh, kingdom of Israel that was founded by Talut, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, yeah, Talut and Dawud and Sulaiman, the ones who actually uh, founded the original kingdom of Israel. It, it then splintered into two, and then the last, then these two disintegrated, one of them remained, one disintegrated, one remained. The one that remained was finally gotten rid of by the Assyrians who attacked them in 722 uh, BC. And then uh, another group came and eventually uh, the Babylonian expulsion took place under Nebuchadnezzar, Bukhta Nasr, Nebuchadnezzar in 597 BC. So this is one interpretation that the first of them was 722 BC and the second of them was 597 BC. Others have said, and this is very popular as well, and this is the position of even some of the Tabi'un. Some of the Tabi'un, this was their position. That the first of these, uh, is 597 when the second temple was destroyed. Uh, maybe one day we'll have a longer history about the Bani Israel. There were two temples, the original temple of Sulaiman, that Allah Azza wa Jal blessed Sulaiman with, that the jinn helped him to build a magnificent structure that people could marvel at because it wasn't built by humans only. So this was the jinn helped Sulaiman built the most magnificent icon in the whole world at that time. And this was destroyed in 722 by the Assyrian invasion. And then they built a second temple. And the uh, King Herod built the other temple which was then destroyed under the Roman destruction of 70 CE. 70 CE, after Jesus Christ, right? So from 722, there was no temple. Then King uh, Herod, or Herod built the temple again, and it was there for a few decades. Then in 70 BC, the Romans came and destroyed the temple, and the Wailing Wall that we see today is the only remnants of the second temple built by King Herod or King Herod. As for the temple of Sulaiman, nothing remains. Wala shay, nothing. What we have is the second temple, one wall, and that's the western wall, and that is the wailing wall that you know, that was built around the time of Jesus, and that is now the wall that they go and they worship at. So, many of our tabi'un said, the first is uh, the expulsion of Bukhta Nasr because Bukhta Nasr massacred them. It was one of the main massacres of the Bani Israel and he was uh, yani somebody who uh, as, yani, uh, basically uh, almost exterminated them that they had to flee to various places in the world and then uh, in the Roman expulsion as well in 70 CE another wave took place. Jayyid. This is the classical interpretation that the two have already occurred. You understand where I'm heading with this? There is a modern interpretation that a number of prominent ulama from across the globe, and I mean, there are a number of names, but most of these are not to the level that we understand. Footnote here, generally speaking, students of knowledge stick with the madrasa they graduate from. So if their teacher said it, they will remain that way. So to break away from the tradition is not something that is typical understandably so, and I'm not encouraging that. So whatever your teachers taught you, whatever you read Ibn Kathir and Tabari and Zamakhshari and whatnot, you will stick with it and keep on, keep on replicating. Alhamdulillah, there's no problem. Some people are willing to rethink through and break away. Sometimes that good, that's good, sometimes that bad. I'll be the first to say, not every breaking away is good. And those ulama who tend to do this, obviously they have to yani, face their backlash and, and whatnot, but at the same time, they're the ones who produce some very interesting ideas, such as the, what, what I'm about to say. A number of prominent scholars in Egypt, in Bilad al-Sham, in Palestine, a number of places, they are saying, why are we assuming that these are in the past? The Quran doesn't say so. In fact, the Quran only says one of them. Mafula. The first one has taken place. As for the second, the Quran does not say that it has taken place. Why are we assuming it has taken place? And now you see exactly where we're heading with this, right? What other so the first one would then be most likely the first destruction of the temple. That was when the glory of the original kingdom completely gone. And they have never had that type of political stability 
Up until when? We all know up until when. And so, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ We give you one more chance and you were victorious over your enemies. وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ We helped you, we aided you. You had government aid, you had the largest endowments from the biggest superpower in the world. You had everything you could have ever wanted. Right? وَجَعَنَّاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا You couldn't have asked for more. With all of this, what did you do? إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ If you acted properly, that would have been for your own. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ So then when the second time comes, لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ means there's a missing phrase like we said, another group will come. And this group will eliminate the izza that you had and you shall see that your ulu and your fasad and your evil did not help you. And you will see it and your faces will demonstrate that. Now here's the key point that allows them to make this tafsir. The group that is being referenced here, it is not alien to Masjid al-Aqsa. This group has already conquered Masjid al-Aqsa at some previous point in history. And now they are conquering it again. وَلِيَدْخُلُ الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Who conquered Jerusalem once before and wants to conquer it again? So this was a complete different long tangent that needed to be done when it comes to Ashrat al-Sa'ad, the science of Judgment Day.